So in this video, we're going to learn how to add 3D content to a Vision OS app. So when we press the Explore More button, we would want an animated 3D experience of the astronaut like this. Great, so let's get started building this thing on and choose the Vision OS template, name it, say, Volumes Project. So initial scene, I'm going to choose Window, click Next and save it wherever you want. Great, to start with, I'm going to remove everything. Now I'm going to quickly design the initial window of the app. So I have a Z stack here. First, I want the astronaut image. And on top of that, I want an explore more button. So Z stack lets you place content on top of each other. For the astronaut image, I'm going to go to assets and I'm going to drag in this image of an astronaut that I downloaded from the internet. And I'm going to use that here, create a new image set and add this image here. So I'm going to rename this astronaut now. And then I'm going to go back to content view. I'm going to choose the image component with the name of the asset file that I just included. Great. So first of all, I want this image to fill the entire window. For that, I'm going to call the resizable modifier, which makes the image resizable. And then I'm going to scale it to fill the window. Scale to fill. Awesome. That's ready. Next, I'm going to add in the button because it's a Z stack. It's going to place the button on top of the window. So button with text, explore more. And when we press the button, we'll do something here. Great, that looks good already, but I want the button to be a bit larger. So I'm going to use the control size modifier for this. So control size and extra large. So there we've designed the window of our Vision OS app very quickly. Now what we want is when we press this, we want to show a 3D experience, right? And to do that, we'll explore two techniques. And the first one, we'll use the model 3D API, which is pretty limited because it won't let you play the animations and all that. It's usually just good for presenting static, simple 3D experiences. And then we'll overcome that limitation by using volumes to show a full-blown 3D experience. So first, model 3D API. So the model 3D API is literally just like the image component in Swift UI, but instead of presenting an image, you could present a 3D model. That's it. So for that, first thing what I want to do is download the 3D model of the astronaut. Here, there's the quick look gallery provided by Apple, which gives you plenty of 3D models to play out with. I'm going to choose an example with an animation. So this one, the cosmonaut, if I click on it, it will download the file. And I'm going to simply take that and drag it to my project here and click finish. In Xcode itself, you can check out the model and I click on this and you can see the 3D model it's animated that we imported, it's right here. Pretty cool, huh? So now we know the model's imported, it's animated, and it's working. And it's got sounds as well. Now let's bring them into our app. So I'm gonna type model 3D, this component, and I'm gonna do the one with the name, content, and placeholder. And here, I'm gonna type in the exact name of the astronaut.reality file. So that's astronaut, great. Now, this closure, I'm going to click enter for it to expand. So here in this closure, what we'll get is we get the 3D model from here. What I'm going to do is take that model and just place it just like that. And the placeholder would be a view that you want to show when the model's loading. Let's do a progress view for now. Awesome. So now if you look at the preview, you can see the model appeared on top of the image at the button, just like we placed it in the Z stack. Now you may notice some limitations. The 3D model showing fine, the sound is playing, but the animations are not. And as far as I'm aware, there's no easy way to play animations using a Model 3D API. So the Model 3D API is in general limited to static, simple models that you want to show in your view. Now, if you want something more complex, something more dynamic with animations and a full-blown 3D experience, what we want to use is volumes and a reality view inside because a reality view is where you could place all your 3D content and dynamic experiences with this full-blown magic. So let's remove this model 3D API. Now volumes are bounded containers where you can place your 3D experiences. It's not a two-dimensional space, it's a three-dimensional space. Now the way you define volumes is you again define a window group, but this time for the window style, you would choose volumetric so now in our app, we got a window and a volume. The volume is simply a bounded container. Now we want to fill it with something, right? But the way you do that is you place the 3D experience inside what you call a reality view. Create a new SwiftUI view. Let's name this view astronaut 
experience. So here in this astronaut experience view, we're going to place a reality view, which is really what you use to create dynamic, full blown 3D experiences. You need to import reality kit and then I'm going to claw reality view. And then if you click enter on these closures, this would be the reality kit content and this would be the updates. And the update bit is when you want to update the state of your reality view, which we're not going to worry about now. So I remove the update bit and all we want to do is place our animated astronaut experience inside this reality view. So in reality kit, think of everything as entities and entities have components which define its behavior. And right now the reality view is empty and it has zero entities. And now we want to create one entity and that entity would be the astronaut's 3D model. So what here I'm going to do is load the astronaut model and then I'm going to add this model into the content of reality view. So add entity to reality view. Great. So first let's load this and we're going to make sure we load this asynchronously. So the app is performant all the time. We're going to create a new entity. So this creates a new entity by asynchronously loading it from a file in a bundle. So the file name is astronaut, right? So we're going to copy this guy here, exactly the same name and go back to the astronaut experience and paste it here. Great. It says call can throw, but it's not marked with try because it's asynchronously loading. We're going to do try await. Now let's assign this to say a model or astronaut entity. You'll notice this is an optional, right? So we need to unwrap it. So I'm going to do if let astronaut entity. Simply put here, we got the astronaut entity, which is the 3D model here. And now we can use that. What we can do is add this to the reality view. So content dot add and the entity that we want to add is the astronaut entity. Now, if we go back, what we can do is inside the volume, we can call this reality view that we just created. So astronaut experience. So simply put, this guy is a reality view and inside the reality view, we've placed the astronaut's 3D model. Now we need to do one more thing. When the app starts, it will simply call the first window group defined in the scene. It won't open this. We need to programmatically open this. Now to programmatically open this, we're going to go back to the content view, which is the starting point here. And then when we click the explore more button, we want to show the volume. So how do we do that? For that, we're going to use this environment object, which lets you open a window group with a given ID name. So environment, open window, private bar, open window. Now, if I go here, when I click the explore more button, I want to open the volume. So I'm going to open window with the ID. We've given this an ID of volume. So what we want to do is open the window group called volume. So copy that guy here, volume. Now, if I click on the explore more button, it should open the volume, which contains the reality view. Let's try this on. Great. So we got the starting window as expected. When I click on explore more, now you can see the volumes appearing. But one thing you notice is the sounds play, the model is showing, but the animation is still not playing. Now that's where reality view comes in because with reality view, you can dynamically interact and change the model, such as playing an animation or responding to user input events. That's why we use reality view for complex 3D processes. So let's do that. Now we want to start the animation of this model right when the volume opens. So for that, I'm going to go back to the astronaut view. This is the reality view where we place the astronaut model. Now, what we want to do is before adding it to the reality view here, we're going to modify this a bit by changing the starting position and starting the animation to before adding it to the reality view. For the starting position, I'm going to choose astronaut entity transform or translation. And here for the X, Y, Z, I'm going to do zero minus 0 0.4 and 0 0.3. These are arbitrary numbers that I played around with until it looked good. You can try your own. Now, finally, we need to play the animation, right? For that, if you take the entity and you'll see there's a method called play animation it requires an animation that you want to play. Now, where do we get this animation from? Well, the animations bundled straight into the reality file, right? The guy here. So we need to extract the animations out of that. So for that, what we're going to do is astronaut entity dot available animations. This gives you the list of animations attached with this entity. We're going to get the first one and I'm going to unwrap that because this is an optional. So this guy here represents the animation attached to the astronaut entity. And now I'm going to use the play animation method by clicking play animation. And for the animation, I'm going to 
pass in the animation that we just extracted, the one that belonged to the entity. And the rest, I'm just gonna leave that out for now. And now that should be good to go. We've changed the starting position of the entity. We got the animation that was associated to the entity and we played that animation here. And after doing all that, we add that to the reality view. Now if we click build and run, let's see what we get. Great, so it's the starting window as usual. You click explore more. Awesome, so now it's working as expected. It's animating and the audio is playing too. You can move the volume around because it's separate. So that's it, hope you enjoyed it and see you soon.